Okay, hello wonderful people. It's a nice introduction, right? Yes, um, today I want to introduce an idea that's not an old idea. It's, uh, it's been around for a while, it's just not, hasn't been as popular as some other ideas regarding the global flood or shortly afterward the glo after the global flood. So, here it is. It's the, uh, it's the time when the languages were confused. And there is a, there's a little verse in the Bible that says that in the days of Peleg, the earth was divided. Let me see what it actually says. It actually says, two sons were born to Eber. One was named Peleg, because in his time the earth was divided. Now this is significant because it seems to be saying the earth was divided in the days of Peleg. And uh, I don't know why that would refer to the confusion of the languages. I don't know why he would be be called the uh, the earth was divided if the languages if it was in commemoration of the languages being confused. I don't that doesn't make sense to me. But anyways, it appears to be shortly before the um, the confusion of the languages. So what I believe was what happened was the following. I'll just go ahead and try to read it here. So maybe it'll be more organized. Uh, the Bible verse that the the idea that the uh, earth was divided or the earth broke apart in the time of Peleg is the is the one that actually says the earth was divided in the days of Peleg. Many people take that to mean that the people were divided because that was also near the time when the language was confused, the spoken language was confused, so that each family went their own way. But the problem with that is that it does not actually say the people were divided. It says the earth was divided. And it seems to me to be have occurred slightly before the confusion of the languages, language that took place, that everyone, every family spoke their own language and uh, went their own way. Of course, this is at the time of the building of the Tower of Babel. Everybody was working on the Tower of Babel. And uh, God said he, that he confused their languages. So this could be how God confused their languages. Because they, they apparently were getting along fine, you know, at the time. And uh, the only mechanism that I can offer would be that 100 years after the flood, which is what what it was is it was a hundred years after the flood the sediment layers hardened and became brittle and broke apart probably with the help of an asteroid hitting Central America and the uh, tectonic undercurrent is what then shoved India into Asia as everything else just basically broke apart you know as we see the, the map today, the world today. And of course that, that's what caused the, uh, the rift between the Americas and Europe and Africa. Because the sediment layers go from one continent to the other, they don't, they don't stop, you know. They're, it's like the sediments were deposited first and then they broke apart. So this idea that it happened before the flood is a little bit contrary to that. So, 
that would be the mechanism. I don't know if there's any literature or what literature that supports this idea. I know that some people do take it to mean that the earth was divided. I don't know how many. I don't know what kind of literature there is on it. But um, there, I would think there should be something because it actually says the earth was divided and it was slightly before. And come to think of it, the shock of the earth being divided could have probably did contribute to the division of the languages. That was probably how God confused the languages. The asteroid hit hit the uh, the land in Central America, broke broke apart, separated the Americas. Of course, there was a a sliding that occurred on the tectonic plates because of the asteroid that hit. And then while everything else broke apart, and of course we know the, the big story that India crashed into Asia from, from those tectonic currents below. So, and that, that happened, uh, they say that the uh, Atlantic split rift occurred after the uh, Pacific Ocean rifts, the rifts in the Pacific Ocean, which are discombobulated. They're, they're not, it's not just one rift, it's a bunch of different rifts. But the Atlantic rift is one split down the middle, of course. And uh, they say that occurred after the uh, Pacific Ocean bottom formed. So the Pacific Ocean bottom formed first and then the Atlantic Rift formed at that time. And of course that could have also contributed to the uh, the magnetic field flipping around as well. But I don't know exactly how that fits together. But there... <clears throat> so the uh, there would have been a consolidation of the families and a lot of talk to describe what was going on with the continents breaking apart or whatever visual aspect they had of that or, you know, earthquake or whatever they had, tsunamis and stuff, whatever. Um, that would have contributed to or probably contributed to the separation of the families and the confusion of the language because there would have been a lot of talk amongst the families themselves, the consolidation of the families and then the families talking amongst themselves and then not being able to understand what their neighbor was saying because of the uh, the event that took place. So everybody's kind of like confused, a state of confusion and everybody just kind of like went their own way and separated and went in all different directions like the Bible says from Turkey. And that's exactly what the DNA shows, too. The DNA, both the Y chromosome DNA, which is the father, the line from father to son, and the mitochondrial DNA, which is the line from the mother to the daughter, both of them show a strong presence of all of the people, all the nations, in the area of Turkey and Greece. And and being separated from that point. You can look at a map, you can see it. They have pie charts. You can see the pie charts are full of everyone's represented in Turkey and Greece in that area, that Middle East area. You have everyone represented there in the both white chromosome DNA and the mitochondrial DNA pie charts. And then then when when they sep spread out and go to Africa it's not not everybody's represented there and when they spread out and go to Europe not everybody's represented there and when they spread out to India and Asia and Australia not everybody's represented there so according to the DNA pie charts it's exactly like the Bible shows exactly like the Bible says. Everybody was located in that central region, in the Middle East, and everybody spread out from there. And uh, 
there you can even see where everyone went there's you could probably even identify the sons of Shem the sons of Ham and the sons of Japheth you know <laughs> with with the DNA you could probably even identify them but I haven't even gone that far I haven't even tried to do that yet but I do know that the sons of Ham the Y chromosome are a, B, C, D, and E. And the F is a very small number of people, so I'm not really sure which who they belong to, but they probably belong to the next group, which is F, G, H, I, J, which is the Semites. And then again, there's the K, which is a small group of people. I don't know who they belong to, but it could be either either the Shemite or the Japhethite. Then there's J... Oh, I mean, uh, there's K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. So, in Africa, you have the A, B, D, and E, and the C went off to America somehow, <laughs> which is interesting. The C, the C, Y chromosome went off to the Americas. And the the I and the J, the J pretty much stayed in the Middle East area, the J. The I went to Europe, where also the Japhethites, the R went to Europe as well. And so there's the R and then there's the other ones. And you can look at the pie charts and you can see exactly how they spread out, how the people of the earth, the families of the earth spread out. So it's really, really interesting how that happened. But it seems to me that, we, you know, we, we don't really need any fantastical belief of how, how the earth was divided. You know, it's probably a straightforward event. The, the continents, the sediment layers hardened. They got brittle. They broke apart with the help of probably the asteroid that hit Central America and caused the, the rift between North and South America and Europe and Africa, and you can see what happened in the geology, in the ocean bottom. You can see how it spread apart, and it probably spread apart at a good pace to begin with and then probably slowed down. Of course it slowed down because there was pressure, which also pushed up the the Appalachian Mountains and the and the uh, the Pacific pressure from the Pacific uh, plates pushed up the Rockies because of the pressure and you can see you can see that that the Appalachians were pushed from the pressure from the uh, tectonic plates pushing on it from, from the uh, Atlantic Ocean and the Rocky Mountains were pushed up from the pressure from the plates from the Pacific Ocean as it spread out. And of course there was a ridge probably the ridge, the, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge probably pushed up out of the water at that time too and it's probably possibly, probably where Atlantis was because it was Atlantis was beyond the Straits of Gibraltar. And I think in the Azores, you know, there there is the Azores, of course, too. But, the, of course, the Azores are really, really high mountains, high islands. You go way up. But anyways, down on the ocean floor, they think they see something down on the ocean floor there near the Azores or at the, at the, bo at the ocean bottom. The Atlantic Rift, it's Atlantic Rift is where, where that is. The Azores. I've been to the Azores because they speak Portuguese. They have a military base there, and I flew there when I was in the army, and so I'm familiar with the with the area somewhat. There's a couple of islands. There's an island of Pico, Angra do Heroismo, and I mean that's the city of Terceira, Ilha Terceira, and oh, you know chain of islands, just like kind of like the Hawaiian Islands, but they're from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that was pushed up, or what remains of that, but 
they could have been where Atlantis was. You know, I'm not I'm not really strong on that belief, but it's just a possibility. Because it probably pushed up out of the ocean as it as the pressure was building and then sank back down. Which caused Atlantis to sink into the ocean. But that's just an idea. But as far as the Atlantic ridge splitting, we can see exactly what happened. You know, how it pushed up the, the Appalachian mountain chain on the east coast and the Rocky Mountains on the west coast. And everybody is pretty much in agreement with that. And although, and everybody's pretty much in agreement that it was hit by some kind of asteroid or something in Central America. But they not too many people I don't think have tied it together with the with the rift with the split um, because we we should expect that the uh, the con the continent would have the the land area would have gotten brittle and probably breaking already even even as it was being hit by the asteroid it's probably brittle and, and breaking and it just broke basically broke apart and all the continents broke apart and it's exactly what the Bible says the earth was divided in the days of Peleg and then because of the the shock of this event probably is what caused the languages to be confused because there had been the con consolidation of all the families getting together trying to save themselves and everything save their own family who are you going to go to if something happens if a, an event like that happens you're going to go to your family go to your your father, your mother, your brothers, your sisters. And so that's probably what everybody did. They consolidated in their families. And and before long, they were talking about this, that, and the other thing. And before long, they couldn't even understand what their neighbors were saying. So it's no fantastical belief required, you know. No fantastic supernatural event or anything required. Not that it could, God can't do, I mean, it was already, everything is supernatural anyway. But God uses natural things, quote unquote natural things, all the time. He's, you know, all, a lot of the miracles, we call them miracles, but a lot of them were natural events that just happened to have happened at the time, at the right place at the right time. But so God uses the natural events all the time, the quote unquote natural events, because nothing's natural, anything, everything's supernatural to begin with. And when it says God confused the languages, he confused the languages. It's exactly what he did. So, so there's, it's really not, it's not complicated. It shouldn't be complicated. It shouldn't be hard to understand as far as that goes. So, I'm open to discussion. Anybody who wants to discuss, of course, they can click on the link to, to join. And I can do my best to present you, you know, whether, whichever way you want to be presented, whatever. And um, there's that. I just wanted to present this because I was having a discussion with somebody. Somebody wanted me to uh, explain the idea to them, so I explained it, and it just, you know, stuff fell into place. Of course, it, I had been thinking about this, you know, for several years now, and but but the idea that that the, uh, the breaking apart of the language, the dividing, the earth being divided, would have been a shock to the people. Whatever in whatever way they would have seen something to her happen, and of course they knew it, the earth was divided. So that would have been a, a big shock, and they would have consolidated into their own families, and that's probably how the languages got confused in the first place. So I just you know was able to put that together just today. Uh, and of course, if anybody wants to contribute or put their thoughts into the you know situation, it's that's fine too.
but you know everyone has a tendency to like believe in fantastical things you know the Jewish people when when they were expecting Messiah what did they expect they were expecting Messiah to ride in on a white horse and they were expecting he would be king they were expecting he would conquer all their enemies conquer the Romans conquer all the enemies right and Christians what do they expect Christians expect they're going to be raptured out of this world the trouble the tribulation they're not going to have to go through tribulation and all this they're going to, going to be raptured out of the world while everybody else now is going to be suffering and tormented and tortured by all the events that are going to happen. You know, while they, they're up in heaven watching all the, all the misery that's taking place. You know, it's a fantastical idea. You know, people always will go to the fantastical ideas with themselves being the ones who are the survivors. <laughs> who are in the good situation, right? That's just a normal, natural, common thing that people do. You know, when you think of a catastrophe happening, do you think of yourself as a person who's who's underneath the asteroid? No, you think of yourself as the survivor. You think of yourself as the one who's who's going to survive. You don't think you're going to be the one that that the uh, the tsunami rolls over or whatever you know you think of yourself as the one who survives and that's the way it always is you know so we have to be careful with these fantastical beliefs that we think of you know and we need to think in more in line of a natural progression of things unless there's a specific indication of a of some kind of miracle which everything is basically a miracle anyways to begin with, but but there is a natural, I mean, there is the natural set in motion. And uh, unless otherwise stated, we should go with the natural things that are set in motion. So that's, that's what I think is the most rational and reasonable thing to believe. I don't believe that there was a split and a gush of water shot out and and that's and it struck the moon and that's why there's craters on the moon and that's why it rained for 40 days because it gushed out from underneath. No, I think the rain was the result of the loss of the uh, loss of pressure, atmospheric pressure. When there was a loss of atmospheric pressure there was uh that's when the the rain the water condensed out of the atmosphere and rained for 40 days and 40 nights so and besides that of course we know the fountains fountains of the deep broke open it's not necessarily one fountain one big fountain it was the fountains of the deep broke open which the the earth of course was a lot different before the flood because water would come up at night to water the plants so there was no rain there's no indication of rain it's uh, the bible says that water would come up at night to water the plants so every night it was like a hydro hydroponic it was like a hydroponic watering system where it watered all the plants and that's why the earth was so productive could have could have been even tied with the uh, with the lunar cycle the uh, the lunar cycle of the uh, the pole of the moon on on the water you know at night the water would come up and water the plants and then and then go down but then when it rained of course everything would have been turned to mush when it rained and then water coming up from below Everything would have been turned to mush. Everything would have been turned into sediment layers spread around the world, like we see in the geo geologic uh, so-called column 
the ge geology of the earth that's what we see we see consecutive layers one on top of the other with no nothing in between just flat layers horizontal layers over a mile deep everywhere around the world of course with distortions like I said with the uh, Appalachian Mountains going up, the Rocky Mountains are going up. And with the Rocky Mountains, the, the igneous rock actually pushes up through the sedimentary layers in the middle. That's how much the Rocky Mountains were pushed up. Now Everest, on the other hand, is still sedimentary layers. It was pushed up higher, but it's still sedimentary layers up on top. But that's just an interesting thing. And of course, the Mount Everest is because of India smashing into Asia. Um, but yeah, it's, it makes a lot of sense to me. It's not it's not complicated, and there's no reason why why we should think that. I mean, besides, there's the the sediment layers cross from the North America to Europe. The same sediment layer in North America is also in Europe. The ones, you know, they cross from one continent to the other, and probably in Africa and South America too, which there's not, may, there might not be enough uh, information on that yet. Or if there is, I don't know about yet. But we have sediment layers going from one continent to the other, so they probably were together at the end of the flood, and they broke apart a hundred years after the flood in the days of Peleg when the Bible says the earth was divided. Not the people, the earth was divided. And then the people were divided. And then the languages were confused. And it was a hundred years after the global flood. So there was time for the sediment layers to harden and to become brittle and to break apart. Of course, they would have broken apart even more so with with the asteroid hitting Central America, which probably even caused the slide, you know, it's partially, probably the the cause of the slide to begin with, you know. And, uh, but that's just, of course, an idea, and uh, I'm willing to just, just let it fly and see, see how it, see how it stands, whether, you know, if it stands, it stands. If it doesn't, it doesn't, you know. It's no big deal. But that makes a lot more sense to me than this idea of uh, a split and water shooting up to the moon and and causing all the rain. I don't think that was the, the case. Anyway. I mean, you know, every... We have to go with what the Bible says, and uh, what we don't know, we have to fill in the uh, fill in the, the missing pieces, you know. But they have to fit together, though. They can't. It can't be fantastical things, you know. It has to be something that fits together, that fits. And it, to me, it seems like that fits. Of course. When I read Genesis, it's the same thing. You have to go with a natural progression of things. You can't be thinking of fantastical things in, in that case either. So so I don't believe that the, uh, the sun and moon were made on Wednesday because the heavens and the earth were made on the first day and there was darkness that covered the surface of the deep, the first surface of the earth. So according to... Genesis when you first start reading and there was darkness covering the surface of the earth and the spirit was moving on the sur surface of the waters and he said let there be light on earth because there was probably already light elsewhere because it said the darkness was covering the surface of the deep so in other words there was darkness when when the spirit was moving over the surface of water, there was darkness on earth. Of course, the surface was water because the dry land hadn't appeared yet. But that's when he said, let there be light. And there was light. 
it, and it didn't say he made light or anything. He just said let there be light. And on Wednesday, the uh, luminaries were made to be seen. In other words, on the first day, you could there was light, but you couldn't see the source of the light. It was probably still cloudy. And on Wednesday, the sky cleared up, and you were able to see the luminaries. That's that's just a you know, to me, an obvious progression of events. There's nothing fantastical about it or anything. It's just what God did. He made the heavens and the earth. They were already there. Everything was already there, and there was darkness on the surface of the earth. And then, then on Wednesday, they were made to be seen. Then it says he made the stars also, as a side note. Not necessarily on Wednesday, and of course... Time is entirely relative anyway. But but it doesn't say it doesn't actually say he made the sun and the moon. It says he, he, he that you could see luminaries in the sky or that let there be luminaries in the sky. So the lights could be seen in the sky. And of course the moon is not actually a light is the reflection of the light but it is a luminary it is a light in the sky though so it doesn't actually say that he made the moon and the sun on Wednesday that's the way I take it to mean because unless otherwise stated we have to go with a natural progression of events because that's what God uses all the time all the time. He uses natural events all the time. And if you walk with the Lord, you know, you should know that. You would know that, probably. And, um, so that's the way I would see it or explain it. Um, it just fits better to me. It makes more sense to me. It's not not anything really out of the ordinary you know because the out of the ordinary was the creation of the heavens and the earth you know that was the out of the ordinary the supernatural and of course everything is supernatural but there's a natural progression of events there's a that's put into motion and unless otherwise stated we should go with a natural progression of events and it's the same thing with the earth being divided. You know, there, there were, could have been asteroids or something at the time of the flood that caused the flood, that caused the depressurization of the atmosphere. And again, a hundred years later, it could have been hit again by another asteroid, which hit Central America which also probably made made up a large part of Central America from the crater. You know, pushing pushing on the uh, material and stuff. Because apparently the Central America didn't even exist at one time. I mean, according to to their surveys and and discovery of uh, things, you know, the way they do. They say that uh, North and South America weren't even joined. So that could have been what joined them, too. That with, you know, maybe some other event, maybe another asteroid or something. You know, I don't know. But uh, that seems to be what broke apart the continents. And it seems to have been a hundred years after the flood it seems to me and the Bible actually records the event it says in the days of Peleg the earth was divided and uh, if I read exactly what it says it says two sons of Eber were born one was named Peleg because in a time the earth was divided in his time the earth was divided And then the languages were confused as a result, probably. So I'll go. I'll go with that. Uh, 
understanding of events and uh, let's see if it flies it flies if it doesn't it doesn't you know that's no big deal I'm not worried about that because it's not a salvation issue <laughs> or like they say it's not a salvific issue it's just uh, putting putting together the pieces of the puzzle and it and it helps if we put it together right it'll help and uh, it helps our theology too not to be thinking that that we're you know we're going to be saved while the Jews suffer you know what kind of logic is that <laughs> you know and, and the Jews thought Messiah would save them save us from the Gentiles and here we Gentiles turn around and think that we're going to be raptured out of the world while the Jews suffer. I mean, just, you know, be a little bit more logical, sensible, and reasonable, you know. And uh, because things things don't always turn out the way you think they will, you know. And, and usually... Your, your way of thinking things are probably a little bit biased and a little bit, you know, fantastical <laughs> and, and not rational, not as rational as it should be. So we have to think, keep ourselves grounded, uh, especially when speaking to atheists and unbelievers. Because you know, anytime we go off the wall, they can they can detect that. They can see. They can see. They can detect that. When, uh, you know, if we say that uh, a fountain shot up and shot to the moon, you know, they'll say what? <laughs> Anyways, whichever. Whichever uh, way is the most reasonable, may, may it win out, you know. But I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about a thing, actually. Because God is the Savior. I don't have to worry about what people say. God is my Savior. And so... There's no man that's going to determine whether or not I'm saved or not, you know. But it's been good, it's been real. And I guess if there's nobody to join, maybe I'll just go ahead and end this here. Because I don't want to keep on rambling for no reason, you know. So, I hope everybody, you know, comes to the knowledge of the truth that there is a history of mankind and it's a it's a known history it's not it's not something we can't know and it makes all the sense in the world the, you know the history of the bible is the most accurate record of human history that there ever was in all of history you know, it's verified by archaeology and everything. DNA, even DNA at times, you know, verifies what the Bible says. So, it's true that only your maker, of course you have a maker, right? You Only your maker can cover for you himself, perfectly and completely cover for you himself, not like a bull, a lamb, a goat, or anything, or a sinful human being. Only your maker can perfectly cover for you himself and remake you again from the inside out by the power of his true word, by the power of his Holy Spirit to sanctify you, to remake you, to cause you to be born again from the inside out as no one else can. So that is the only truth there is. There is no other truth. All powers get their power from an infinite uh, potential, which is the all-powerful God, 
which was spoken of by the goat herders that everybody, that the scientists like to make fun of. The goat herders got it right, the scientists got it wrong. So there's, there's that too. So we really have to learn the facts, know the facts, and know what the truth is. And the truth is not that we have a natural cause, because a natural cause is just absurd. You can't have a natural cause of nature. You can't give glory to the creature rather than the creator. You know, that's why that's why you're irrational and you're, you do irrational things, is because you don't believe the truth. So... The idea is to get everybody to believe the truth, everybody to tell the truth, and we'll be rational thinking human beings, and we'll treat each other right, and uh, there's no reason to go around killing Christians because they're teaching a belief in God, or there's no reason to discriminate against Christians because they believe in God. There is no reason to put them out of science classes and science schools and science curriculum because they believe in God. That's discrimination, and it's a biased discrimination based on a false belief in naturalism making itself, natural things making themselves. So it's totally backwards. It's exactly backwards. There's so many things in this world are, that are exactly backwards. It's the Christians that got it right. It's the goat herders that got it right. You scientists got it wrong. And you don't have any evidence for your object credit giving position. You know, here I'm going on a rant again because of these because of all the nonsense. So I hope everybody learns the truth, knows the truth, understands the truth and becomes saved by the knowledge of the truth and and uh, the power of the Holy Spirit to sanctify you. Because Jesus shed his blood in order to send the Holy Spirit to you in order to sanctify you. And his blood is precious, the Holy Spirit is precious, and if you reject the Holy Spirit sent to you, you're rejecting the only link that you have to God. There is no other link to God. Only the Holy Spirit made possible by the blood of Jesus. That's your only hope. That's your only link to God.